Greetings, Earthlings. Well, here's the monitor um, removed from the game. And uh, what I'm going to do is open it up and see if we can figure out what went wrong with the audio. Um, I've already unscrewed. It's two screws. It's easy. Okay, and of course, the first thing you do um, is just look and smell. Now, I will say that when it failed, I thought I was catching a faint whiff of burned something, burned electronics. Okay, so um, the first thing we're going to do before we try to plug it in and trace a signal through it or anything is simply um, have a good look at it. And that's why I've got it here. I've got it here on the carpet. So it's not likely to zap me. Um, and uh, with, I hope, fairly decent lighting. Wait a minute. It needs to go, oh, there, okay. Yeah, that's where it is. Okay, take my leg out of the shot. And, uh, well, I'm gonna put the, uh, I'm gonna hit it with the flashlight. Let's see what we can see here. And oh, right away, I see a problem right there. I'll get a close up of that. It's R712. There's a resistor that looks, well, it looks, it is burned. And it's burned beyond all recognition. Um, <laughs> it used to have stripes on it, you know, indicating its value, but. Uh, they're burned away, and so this presents a problem because I do not have schematics for this. Um, you know, it would be easy enough to replace that resistor probably with one of higher wattage based on what we're seeing here. Of course, there could be other problems which, which drove it to uh, burn out, um, but clearly that resistor needs to be replaced. Uh, but I don't know the value. So my other option is to basically reverse engineer the circuit, work out the circuit diagram, and figure out an appropriate value that could go there, or what would, you know, what would be appropriate. Um, and that sounds like a lot of work. Now, I'm not curious, Mark, and this is not an Apollo guidance computer. So I can't just put a PNP transistor in. No, no. Um, <laughs> I don't have to, um, I don't have to, you know, make, make it, uh, make this, this unit work. Um, the goal is to make the game work. And I built the game so it can work however I want. So um, I do not have to use the audio in the monitor. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Um, it's gone. Um, so I can add an external speaker. Well, I, I, I did that at the VCF West show, and I bought these at Fry's uh, Pro. It says Pro, so it must be good, right? Um, well, all I needed was a single amplified speaker with an RCA plug on it. Well, there's no such thing. Um, so this was, had the, uh, little mini headphone jack and I needed that and then another connector to go to RCAs and then it's powered by USB. Yuck, 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 yuck. Uh, but I made it work. But if we open this up, and again, I've already removed the screws, maybe we can use what's in here. Okay. So there's a speaker. Surprise. It's glued in, so I may not be able to use that particular speaker. But there's the amplifier board, and it's a TDA TDA twenty eight twenty two, which if we bring up the uh, bring up the data sheet, dual low voltage power amplifier will run uh, up to twelve volts. So that's handy um, because I do have 
I have 5 volts, of course, which is what the USB would have been giving it. But I also have 12 volts, which is feeding that coin acceptor. So I could, I could operate this off of 12 volts. Um, just need to cut the, uh, cut the cords. And uh, then I do have the option. I could try to cut that speaker out. I think I may have some other speakers. I know I have this one. Now, this would be gross overkill. But why not? Um, this chip, <laughs> this chip, this is, uh, was a woofer in a, in a, um, two-way speaker system. Um, and, uh, it's good up to about five kilohertz. Um, I've actually run it off of a square wave generator just to see how it sounds. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it, it'll, it'll, it'll do a decent job. Uh, and, it, and it will have lower bass than, than this thing would um, if I want to generate bass frequencies. Um, what, was I, uh, what was I saying? Oh, this chip uh, looks like it'll generate about a half a watt. into Well, that's into a 4 ohm load, but um, anyway. Really plenty, I think, probably plenty to drive this to an obnoxious... Uh, <laughs> Level, so that's an option. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to consider it. Okay, so here's what I've done. Um, I've removed the power switch because I won't need it in this application. I've taken the uh, leads off that went to the power and to the uh, other speaker, and this, uh, which went to the like eighth inch headphone jack. I've put a nice Nutrik RCA plug on it, okay? I have this little tone generator and here's 12 volts with the power supply out of the picture. You can guess what power supply it is if you've watched any previous videos and let's just see what happens. Oh! Let's get the speaker in the frame, okay? This is the original speaker that came with it. And so that's it. It's not very loud. That's as loud as it goes, even on 12 volts, drawing about 100 milliamps. But it should work fine. Now let's see. That's, that's more like... <laughs> that's closer to the sound that the... That the uh, sound chip makes square wave oh it's painful it hurts it hurts so do, 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 do. never mind okay so this is gonna work okay and just for fun let's try it with the big speaker I've left the little speaker hooked up so I can tell that uh, it's still working I haven't messed anything up. So there's power, and there's that sound. And when I go to the big speaker... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's much better. I like that. I like that speaker. And I could probably go lower frequency. Watch this. Um, this is one kilohertz I've been doing. But let's go down to, like, 200. can hardly hear that. That's definitely better. Crank it up all the way. Let's blow up that little speaker. Still virtually nothing out of that. Oh yeah. Definitely way better low frequency response. All right, well, this is very interesting. Um, I was able to cut the speaker out. There is the speaker, this speaker. Here's the other speaker. Um, this, uh, this is the wire pair that goes to the other speaker. Here's the power coming in from the USB. 
and here's the audio in. Now this, this looks like a stereo setup, doesn't it? Uh, two speakers. But look, there's only, there's only, uh, it's only taking the left channel. Interesting. And sending that to uh, both speakers. It's a mono two speaker system. Possibly why it was returned. I bought this, you know, open open box, marked down. Um, so, and I'm thinking, yeah, it's advertised as a stereo, but it's mono, and probably whoever bought it, expecting it to be stereo, returned it when he discovered it wasn't. Can you see that? That would be the. Uh, it says, it says left, right, and there's absolutely nothing connected to the right input. Alright, here's the box the speakers came in. What does that say? Stereo speaker. Yeah. Inland. Okay, these guys sell junk. Inlandus.com Inland Products. Inland Products, Inc. Of Inland Products, Inc. of Fullerton, California. Okay, so I've been looking at this board some more, and I'm noticing some real weirdness here. Um, this would be the power coming in from the USB. And this says... B plus, B minus, and B minus would be ground. I can see that that's ground by following it around. Here, this is ground, this is ground. It even says G there, that's ground. So that should be the negative, which is B minus. But negative should be the um, black lead, and the red lead should be B plus. Uh, here's the other thing. It's a single gang... Uh, potentiometer, volume control, right? They designed it for a second, I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, there's a second row of, you see these three pins, these three pins here. I don't know if this is coming up. Hey, this is making it on screen very well. There's three pins there, which this is connected to. So that's for the, you know, left channel. This would be the right channel ones. Uh, but they only installed a single. So this board was designed again to to be a stereo board but was then implemented as a cost saving measure and probably because they expected no one would notice uh, to take the left channel only as a mono mono board and feed the uh, feed that the amplified left channel to both speakers. Utter garbage.